Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Big Jiu-Jitsu Show. Remember the Pod Bros Podcast Network. Don't forget to go to podbros.com and find yourself another podcast you want to listen to. And don't forget to check out our sponsors, Trap and Roll Soap Company, Tape Armor, and Rolls Gear. And check out all of our old episodes on bjjshow.com. I'm Rob, and hey, we, we know it's been a few months. No excuses there, right? Well, maybe a few. So um, I'm back in the U.S. and uh, been here for a few weeks now, and transition from military life to civilian life has been a very interesting one especially trying to get everything ready and um i guess a new location goes into a new uh, co-host so randy wark who's been on the show a couple times is now the uh now the current co-host <laughs> or as he put it in the episode my future ex-wife or girlfriend or whatever i don't quite remember but we are really glad to be back um and we're really excited to keep this show moving on. I know we've been in for, oh my god, almost end of this year. I think it'll be five years. Wow, that's pretty crazy. And we appreciate y'all's support. So, um, hey, don't forget to go to bjjshow.com and check out our old episodes like we talked about. And, um, you know, find us on Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll talk more after this episode. Just went ahead and I hit record. It's like I said, I like doing it the Joe Rogan style where we just show up or start talking or whatever. But are you drinking a beer? Uh, I am actually. Yeah, yes. So, dude, I've been a little too chungus <laughs> recently, and they have like, uh, my wife got me on these things called Truly. So it's spiked and sparkling. It's like grapefruit and uh, a little bit of vodka, <clears throat> and it's not bad. And so I don't feel like. A fat piece of shit when I drink one. So you're saying you're drinking like the hipster version of Zima? <sighs> Fuck you, man. God. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm drinking the hipster. Yeah. Man, you had to bring up Zima, man. So I'm feeling real, real fucking insecure now. Whatever. I just had that's one. Like the, that's, the, the, that's the drink that our generation used to under his drink. You know it. Like all the other, I know, yeah. It was, it, was that or, it was that or Mike's Hard Lemonade, and everybody would go out and buy a bunch of them, and they felt like badasses drinking them. That's what you're drinking. Right? Oh, dude, I remember Mike's Hard Lemonade. That was fucking awful stuff. It's And they still sell it, don't they? <laughs> yeah, it's still out there. Oh, that's terrible, dude. There, but... Terrible, terrible shit. Well, ladies and gentlemen. I think that was even vodka-based, too. Oh, shit. No, was it? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt the intro, but, dude, I'm I'm amazed. It was just like, it was lemonade and what, grain alcohol almost? I don't know. I thought it was vodka, but I could be wrong. Gross. We'll look it up in a second. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Big Jiu-Jitsu Show. I'm Rob, and today we are, uh, it's transition time. I think that's actually where we're going to, uh, what is it, uh, title the episode there, Randy, and uh, it's transition time. It's I know it's been a few months, and that's okay, but I've also, uh, I just recently moved back to the U.S., and, you know, this podcast is now on its 20th co-host, as John from Jiu Jitsu After Dark would say, probably we have more <laughs> co hosts than whatever. But if you guys have been listening to the podcast for a while, you probably do recognize Randy Wark as uh, one of the former guests on the show and now co host for the foreseeable future. So, Randy, thanks uh, thanks for stepping up, man, and agreeing to be the uh, my cohort for however long we're going to do this podcast in North Carolina. Oh, I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy to be your next ex girlfriend. So. <laughs> I'm like the Elizabeth Taylor of podcasts at this point. I'm just fucking divorcing everybody. Yeah, well, I'm here. I'm here for you know. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm enjoyable. I got you. So. Oh man, I'm I'm glad glad that we got this to work out. So I know that like when I said that I was going to North Carolina, I was like, fuck, who can? Because Aaron, I enjoyed talking with Aaron. I was like, but it was such a short time, and I was like, fuck, I got to figure out somebody who was fun and entertaining. And I was like, oh shit, maybe Randy wants to be a co-host. So we'll try that out. Absolutely. Word. So we've pretty much been going through a couple of transitions ourselves, man. Like between me leaving the military and going to North Carolina, and you, you're doing a, you're doing what now, man? Well, I'm still uh, still working in law enforcement, um, but I've been coaching uh, coaching more up at TFTC and, and kind of enjoying that role. But then within police work, obviously, there's specialties to get into, and you know. 
career enhancers and things of that nature. And I finally got into something that's been a dream of mine since I started. And uh, recently got on a uh, SWAT team. So I've been learning that nice. and, um, you know, getting to experience a whole new level of things. So, Is it anything like the movie SWAT with Samuel L. Jackson? <laughs> uh, not that I've seen so far. I mean, okay. I'm, I'm a new guy. I am like the... I'm the white belt in this community, in this tactical community, so it's like starting all over. But uh, I would be lying if I said I didn't watch that on repeat when I got on the team. Uh, <laughs> it is it is not like that. It's not like the TV show either. The TV show is awful. Well, that – what was it? Are you talking about – wasn't there like a new version of it? Because they had like the really, really, really old one, didn't they? Yeah, and no, I'm talking about the new one. Yeah, I won't I- – I won't throw smoke at the old version. That's that's old school. You got to give that respect. But the new one is awful. So, um, Fuck. no, not like that. It's not like that. <laughs> I'll <laughs> but check it, it out. But it is it is it is incredible. It's been a it's been a hell of a learning experience. Very humbling. Um, you know, obviously, you and I have been doing jujitsu for a long time. And we've kind of gone through that growth process. Well, just think back to when you were brand new on the mats, didn't know what you're doing. You know. Yeah. Um, and it's the same thing in this realm. It's just so far outside my wheelhouse, but it's it's really cool and rewarding to, to do it. So, no, that's awesome, man. Especially when you hit something that's been your dream, like you say. You know, it's 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 a really cool thing. And it's a really cool milestone to hit, and like in yeah, it's really really interesting. Especially when you compared it to like being a white belt all over again. Because this whole civilian thing, man, it's been ten years, but wow. Like, I'm really, really, really <laughs> not, uh, I'm adjusting, but I'm, there's still certain things like, uh, what was it? Uh, we have to mark our hours for work. So then when, what was it? A couple of weeks ago, they're like, Hey, uh, we got to keep you after to talk to you about your benefits. So don't forget to log this as an extra half hour. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, really? I just don't <laughs> stay here and just until I can go home or whatever. But no, nah, that was, that was really cool. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like. I'm new to all of this. Like I just listen to people. They're, like one of the guys who's doing the training is 12 years younger than I am. Oh uh, man! And like you know, he's he's an expert in his field. And I'm just like intently listen. Like age doesn't bother me, and that's something that uh, I don't think a lot of people can understand. Man, like you know, coming from jujitsu, you're not always going to have a coach or an instructor that's like older than you. It always seems to be that way. But I think as the older you get, sometimes you're going to find somebody who's younger and has a little more, more of a better skill set in certain areas you want to learn and you're learning from them. So I guess maybe that it wasn't as big of a deal, but it was still kind of a new experience for me for that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine that. <clears throat> that transition has to be a, a pretty tough one to make, um, you know, coming from being told what to wear every day and, you know, where to go and, you know, you just got everything kind of kind of handed to you, and then you come out here, and all of a sudden you're like, now what do I do? Like, what do I do with my hands? I don't know what I'm doing. Exactly, yeah. I, was, I just put them in my pockets since I can do that and not get in trouble <laughs> out in public yeah. anymore. Dude, I used to do that in the <laughs> office all the time. Though. I just walk around with my hands in my pockets. Do you cut across the lawn, too? Can you cut across the grass? Oh, yeah. I, I honestly, because uh, where we were working, I was, like, looking around. I was like, fucking Sergeant Major comes out here and sees me walking on this grass. He's going to have my ass. And then I'm, my brain goes Dude, you're not in the service anymore. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not in the service anymore. Just keep walking. Just yeah, don't care. think outside the box, man. Now I you know. Can take all these detours and shit. Yeah. I, next, crazy. I can. I need to start like transitioning to like walking and talking on my cell phone. Next, and just, like, <laughs> I can do that. Like, holy shit, it's crazy. And you can go. You know, you know what else you can do? You can go out and you can like work out without your uh, your reflective belt on too. Oh fuck yeah, I totally could, man. Man, this whole. Yeah. It's the simple things, man. It really is the simple things that are just like amazing to me. Now, now I know a lot of people who get out and they're all like bitter, but I'm not bitter. I actually really enjoyed my time. It's just time for me to transition. Absolutely, yeah. yeah and I think that's, I think that's necessary in life, and I think it applies directly to jujitsu because jujitsu is comprised of so many different transitions. Not even just speaking positionally, you know, but yeah. but metaphoric. Well, I mean, we all know the the pattern of jujitsu where you go and you haven't got those days where you go in for maybe a couple of weeks if you're lucky and you just feel on top of the world. I mean, everything you're doing is working, you're submitting people, you're, you're doing your old school game, you've been doing it, you know, this is what you're working on. And then all of a sudden, you hit that dreaded plateau. And then it's the opposite. You feel like nothing works and, you know, we get frustrated and you're like, man, I suck. Why, don't I, why am I wearing this brown belt? I should be wearing a blue belt right now. Yeah. You know, like this is just, you know, we all have that. And then that lasts a period of time and then 
you know, I've had conversations with my coach, uh, Brad, over there at TFTC, and he's yeah. always been good about putting in perspective and saying, hey, this is part of the learning curve. You're, you're, and you're developing new things. You're making a transition, right, in your game. You're doing different things. And so it's not up to par with what you're doing now. But then what happens is, is you make that breakthrough, and then you come right back to kicking ass, and you're just, you know, smashing everybody with this new game that you've come up with. And so, <clears throat> you know, life has transitions. Jiu-Jitsu has transitions because, hey, let's talk about Jiu-Jitsu is life. Man. It is a microcosm of life. It really is. Really, really is. And I think the last time we had you on the show, you hadn't gotten promoted to brown belt yet, had you? Or I'm trying to remember. I did, actually. The last one was right after I got my brown belt. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We had you back on the show. Yeah. <laughs> so so now that you've been a little more seasoned in it, man, like, what? how do you feel taking on that brown belt and kind of – moving your way into it and now coaching more, I guess as well. Yeah. I think the battle has been, you know, I think it's just my, my natural way of being is I'm very, very critical of myself almost to sometimes almost to a detrimental point. And that's kind of been my battle is to improve in that facet, especially like in the SWAT realm too, because it's a new skill set. I'm even more critical of what I'm doing, especially when I'm in front of the team and I want to make a good impression and I want to do well. Um, it's the same thing in jujitsu. The Brown belt is still a heavy belt. I mean, it's something that I'm proud of. I've been doing this for a long time, and uh, I think I said it last time. Uh, the old quote is, "It's not about who's who's good; it's about who stays." And it's that yeah. that stick to itiveness that carries you through the darker shades. So I'm not going anywhere, um, you know. But I feel like the struggle now has been not being a coach too much, and still having time for me. And working on my skill set, improving continuously, because and obviously, um, the next goal is black belt. And you know, to get there, there are still so many things to improve on. It makes sense now. I think you probably heard this too. You didn't really fathom it earlier in the the journey, I think. But you know, any of us never, we did none of us really understood it earlier because it was such a long journey anyway. But I feel like that saying when they say that you know the jujitsu journey really begins at black belt doesn't end there it's just starting out that makes more sense to me now at brown belt because you're like man i got this belt everybody looks at me like i should know so much yeah and have the answer to every question almost because at brown you should have almost every question not every question that's black belt but in reality we don't you know my game is different than yours i'm developing it there's always something i can improve on and tighten up and so you know it's a. Uh, it's been more i think it's been more humbling at brown belt than it has been at any other belt before it no, I agree with that, actually. It's now that we're both actually, and I think this is the first co host I've had on the podcast where we've actually been the same belt rank, so we can actually share opinions and stuff. But, like, <laughs> man, it's a, it, it's kind of a, it is kind of a heavy load, I guess, if you want to, <laughs> if you really want to get into <laughs> Jesus. All right. I mean, it, it really is because, like you said, people look to you. I mean, last time we came in the gym and rolled. Rolled uh, out at TFTC. There was um, I don't even remember who it was. It was, it was some white belt guy. I, I, I feel so bad for not remembering remembering his name. But he started just <laughs> asked me a question. I'm like, "Fuck, man! Like, I don't even know this guy." And he's asking me for like intricate details on moves. And granted, you know, you should mo- know most of the basics. You should know like how they, how like the fine details work in that. But it was still kind of just mind blowing that it'd been a while since I've been in the gym. And a gentleman that I've never even met before. And oh, we did roll. It was me, him, and uh, Rodney. We all rolled together in our little three group. And uh, he was asking me for, like, advice. So it was kind of, like, you know, and you don't want to steer him wrong. And then you get, like, that imposter syndrome. And you're like, fuck, man. Maybe I, maybe I shouldn't be a brown belt. Like, look at all these qualified brown belts. And then there's my <laughs> ass over here, like, occasionally still having a problem with, like, X guard or something. But like nobody, nobody sees that, which is really weird to me. Yeah, well, I think that's I think that's how pretty much every brown belt feels, though, and that's what's been kind of comforting to me is, you know, rolling with some other brown belts that have been brown belts for longer than me, and I bring these things up, and they're like, you're thinking and doing exactly what you should be doing at that stage, and so it's just this constant state of learning. I guess it's like looking at yourself in the mirror every single day; you don't see the changes in your body, right? Yeah, um, better or worse, and so it's the same concept. I mean. We take a lot of things for granted at this point because we're doing it for so long. And there's always going to be um, people at your rank that will just demolish you. It's just the nature of it. There's always somebody better. 
there's games that mix differently, and there's things that I know better than some other brown belts don't, and vice versa. You know, my specialty isn't going to be X card. So there's going to be a brown belt that is a phenom in X card. But does that mean that I'm going to a brown belt because I can't do it the way he does it? No, I've got my thing that I'm really good at. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> and so it is, it's, it's just such a, it's crazy how deep the rabbit hole goes, and I think it's easy to, I, I think the exact same thing you do sometimes. There's days when I'm just like, man, you know, do I really deserve this brown belt on my waist? And I think if you don't think that way, there, then there's probably an issue. Oh, yeah. With your ego or, or, or who you're rolling with and training with, because if you're not getting beat, then you're not learning, you know? Um, so, but it's been fun, man. I mean, it's it's, it's a belt that I'm proud of. I'm, I'm still in that I'm here. Um, but I think uh, it's it's been incredible. It's been fun teaching. It's been fun um, getting smashed by the, the black belts more often, because when you're a brown belt, you get to roll with the black belts more, yeah. you know? <clears throat> so... Something, something you brought up a bit earlier, and I kind of, kind of thought about at that moment when you said it too. Is like it's kind of, you know, not about, well, it's, it's about who, who's left, pretty much. And yeah. something I thought about too. I was like, well, shit, like who's left? Like who are the people I've, I've come up with doing jujitsu and stuff like that, and who's really left? But it seems to be like the people that I really get close to seem to stick with it though not not that i'm the common denominator i think it's mainly people who are in it for the long haul kind of you know tend to uh i guess gravitate towards other people who are in it for the long haul as well not that anything can couldn't happen to them along the way like you know injuries or life or they just legitimately say you know like fuck jujitsu it's stupid i'm it's it's a waste of time like it it still seems that there are like in a group of people that I still like am close with, they're all still training for the most part. Yeah. And I think that that's, it's a huge part of it. I mean, I still go back often to a piece of advice I was given that sounds so basic back when I was a uh, blue belt at Gracie Raleigh. And one of the guys I was training with was getting ready to even move west and I had a lot of respect for him. He's a purple belt. He had a couple stripes. And so he was my senior, obviously, in belt rank. And he was one of the guys that beat me on a regular basis. And But I loved rolling with him because I'd learned something new every time. And uh, I asked him at the bar the one day, it was right before he left, and I said, hey, what piece of advice can you give me? What's the best advice you can give me to keep getting better at this thing? You know? And he looked at me, took a sip out of his beer, and he said, <laughs> he said, just keep showing up. Yeah. And I, and I thought that that was the cheesiest. I was like, at the time, I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, that's, I asked, like, I asked you for wisdom, and you gave me some bullshit, you know? <laughs> and, and, but in reality, that's extremely valuable information for jiu-jitsu because it comes back on that quote, right? Like, just keep showing up, keep going, because you're going to get better, no matter what. I don't care what anybody tells you. If you keep showing up at whatever it is that you're passionate about, you are going to improve. It's impossible not to, yeah. you know? Now, there's, there's ways to expedite your learning. There's... You know, if you, like in Jiu-Jitsu, for example, um, when you roll, having a purpose behind your roll, saying, okay, I'm going to work my butterfly guard more today, or I'm going to look for GT chokes today, or work my transitions better. And you kind of bottleneck it that way, then you're going to improve at those particular areas. And there's, there's all different types of theories on how to improve that. But end of story is you just keep going to the gym. You keep rolling. You keep training. You keep doing what your instructors are telling you to do. You're going to get better. Always, forever. And so if you stick around, and you keep showing up, uh, eventually you're going to see that black belt, you know? And and I think that's why it, it just makes sense. Um, and that's the thing about it is I don't care if I'm a brown belt the rest of my life. Yeah. I'm going to keep training jiu-jitsu because I love jiu-jitsu, you know? Um, no, nah, it doesn't mean that, you know, if, if my instructors are listening, that doesn't mean that I, I never want my black belt, so make that clear. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I'm going to keep showing up regardless. You know? No, I mean, no, it makes sense, man. I mean, for me... But then it comes back on the transition thing, too. Because how is it... Let me ask you this. Sorry yeah. to cut you off. How did, so we're talking about transition. And we, and we kind of discussed this before. Is How is it affecting your training? Because I know for me, having an additional responsibility does have a direct... It makes it more difficult to show up as frequently as I was before when I had less responsibility. It actually makes, like, a huge difference, honestly. So... Um, there was a lot of training involved in the job I took and, <clears throat> excuse me. And, you know, something like it, 
I talked to my wife about it and I was like, Hey, I, I, I mentioned this before we started recording. I was like, Hey, if I don't go to class next week, I'm probably going to blow my brains out. I'm not, not being serious. I'm not really going to kill myself, <laughs> but it's to the point now where I'm like really jonesing to get a role in. Like all my geese are here. Finally, like all the, all my, uh, all my stuff arrived last week. So the majority of the time, like I even told her, I was like, Hey, you know, I'm going to help unpack stuff and set the house up before I really start looking at, you know, going back to class and whatnot. And then, um, there, there's a club on base out here at Bragg that I'll probably jump into. And then of course, coming up to TFTC and, uh, you know, train with you guys is, you know, usual. It is kind of nice to go back to the original Academy that I started in and start back, you know, and start back up. But for, for what it's worth, man, like it's, it actually is kind of nice to not be an instructor though and not run a club, not have to worry about anything. Like I can focus on myself. It is making it difficult to train though, because I'm like, you know, I go in and, uh, go to work, come back. I'm like, all right, cool. What do we got to do? Like, well, we've got like three or four boxes full of just random stuff we need to unpack. Or like, you know, the week before it was, you know, make sure the electricity and the water were in our name or even you know like the week before that I was driving back and forth between Carrie and Fayetteville <coughs> to uh, go you know do the final walk through the house drive back stay in Carrie drive all the way back down sign the papers it was like a lot of back and forth so now it's now we're at a point where it's just I can focus on myself and do finding time to train though it'll happen but at right now until i get my schedule all firmed up dude it's it's gonna be rough and i think that that's i think that might be part of where it really comes into play because i'm in the same boat you are by the way i mean yeah. the amount that i have to train for this team to learn the skill sets involved there i mean talking about lives depend on your performance yeah you know and so it's it's even more important to rep this stuff out get really good at understanding grasp it and um the time that it takes to, to do that and regular job and regular life, it's uh, it is. It fa- so like last week I didn't get to train not once, not one time last week did I get to train. I had to find coverage for my classes, which is becoming all too common. I love teaching. I know you do, and so missing out on those opportunities it really sucks. But at the same time, it's part of life and it's part of that transition phase that we're talking about in this episode. And um. You know, last week not getting to train one time, it, it messes with your psyche. I mean, it's like an outlet. I'm sure you feel the same way about jiu-jitsu. Is mm-hmm. it's just kind of like it balances things out, relaxes your mind, and you know keeps you focused. And <clears throat> so it's definitely been tough. But I think that's what makes the difference, though, right? When we talk about continuing to show up, continuing to train, that that even relates to if you. I think a lot of people this is where they quit, right? Life changes, things change in your life, and if you don't find time for jujitsu and you just walk away then it's over the journey's over you still have to find time. it was just okay i missed last week but i showed up three days this week and i'll be able to go at least twice next week i'm going to keep coming when i can you know and finding time to do it and i think making that commitment that's what that's what it's referring to that's what that that's what leads you to that higher level is instead of finding excuses not to go making the way to go when you can but sometimes hey this is life you know it, so it's no it really is and i mean at the end of the day unless you are running a gym or owning a gym or something like that it is very difficult to show up every day of the week i mean i totally wish i could i'm not gonna lie that would be that would make life would be amazing life would be great but you know something does have to give like you say you know a lot of people do depend on you especially if you're in a job where your skill set matters on like um kind of split second decisions i guess and if you i guess neglect your main responsibilities they will suffer and then like i guess by fault then or going that way then your jiu-jitsu is going to suffer because you can't go jiu-jitsu anymore but i i feel like i guess maybe the more i go towards black belt the more i kind of realize that yeah you know jiu-jitsu is really awesome and i love it And I always joke about it being the house that I've already sunk too much money into, so I can't just get rid of it. (laughs) So, like, for me, it's more or less like I'm going to keep going, and I enjoy it. I love jujitsu, but I'm also going to not guilt myself or be guilted by other people if I have to step away from, you know, class as a student. 
not as an instructor. If you are, if you're an instructor yet, you've given responsibilities unless you cannot get to it. You know what I mean? Right. Like not saying like, yeah, I have a case of the fuck it's not going, but if you know, something needs to be taken care of, like, Hey, we need you to come in tonight or like, you know, Hey, we have, um, like some stuff came in and we want to, or like, you know, my wife says, Hey, you know, let's set up, let's set up the closets. Let's set up some of the furniture. Like, you know, it, it isn't too bad as long as I make that, like you said, find that time to make sure I do come in, make sure I do show up, make sure I do continue to train. And I think in the end, it's still going to be, you know, positive to my jujitsu growth. Absolutely. And I think too, it sometimes those little, those little short breaks are making you better too. You know, sometimes it, it makes you think in a different way when you come back or, the recovery, your body feels a little better, and it can be a positive. But the, the key is, is just not, not quitting on it, you know. No, um, you're, you're but right. it does happen. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying, it, does, it does happen. It does happen in life. In life, it's a different way. And you got to. Yeah, Jujitsu should be a priority, but I think it's important for us to keep things in perspective. Obviously, family and, and, and you know, in my case, family and, and, and the team they have to come first. Because lives depend on that. And so it's keeping things in perspective. But jiu-jitsu is always going to be there as long as you keep showing up. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. I mean, I was it Canada was threatening to outlaw, like, jiu-jitsu tournaments or something like that? Or they, they succeeded because of, like, what is it, the insurance or the athletic commission or something? But out here, man, it's going to be there. And your friends will more than likely still be there. And then you'll just show back up and roll again. But of course, like you said earlier, they're going to give you shit. Because, oh yeah, <laughs> where were you at? Uh, working is that cool? Like, is that fine? But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it goes, <laughs> and that's just gonna be the way it is for eternity. Your your friends are always gonna give you shit for not showing yeah. up. Well, it's so. no different than like you know, they they uh, shoot you a message like, hey man, let's go out, let's go out tonight, and you're like, nah man, I can't. You know, I told you know, I told wife I'd stay home, or you're like, yeah, I got work in the morning or whatever, and then. You hear about how crazy it was. Like, well, where were you at, man? We were out here having a great time, but you wanted to you know, <laughs> hang out with your wife. Like, yeah, I really did. Or you're like, oh, you had work in the morning. Yeah, because I like eating and having a house. <laughs> like, those are <laughs> fucking great things to have. Yes, yeah, responsibility, <laughs> life, being an adult, you know, the things that you're supposed to be doing, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's wild. Huh? But I know it's always, usually it's it's people just talking shit, like in a friendly way, not just uh where yeah, I'm gonna fuck you up next time you're on the mat. Like, oh, f- <laughs> bro, come on, man. That I don't, I can't say I've run into that in the in the gym anywhere, but no, no, no. But it's also nice too to have people that that, that look forward to your presence, and that's been yeah. something that's that's nice. You know, like I came back this week, and, and people were like, man, we've been, we missed you. You know, we missed you teaching, we missed you rolling, and you know, it's it's cool to have that 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 family atmosphere to go back to, and you know, I've. I just I love uh, I love the people that I train with and the gym I train at and you know gyms that I've trained at in the past I just have the utmost respect for the committed people that are there all the time and so it's it's always nice to know that they're there waiting for you when you get back <clears throat> but that is life life transitions things get interesting so yeah we should keep showing up man we hit everything on transitions dude we really did we're we're you know, if we're not doing a podcast in like, what is it? If it's, fuck, it's April. God damn. Uh, <laughs> three months, four months. Like, it's uh, it's not too bad, man, being able to still talk about it. I know James Hoffman was continuously asking when we were going to do another episode. Well, there you go, James. Surprise, you're getting an episode. But, well, uh, we didn't. We didn't talk. We didn't talk about gender transitions. We I don't didn't really know much about that. So, <sighs> you know. Fuck. You know. <laughs> I know Callum, uh, who was a guest before, really wanted to get into it because he's a he's huge into powerlifting in the UK, and he really wanted to like drink like six beers and then just fucking go off on <laughs> on just like unfairness or whatever and transit. Like, but we'll let him do that. <laughs> I'll, I'll say. That I'll sounds, say, do what? That sounds interesting. I I will be. A, I will sit back and as a as an observer. Um, that would be a very interesting conversation. Oh, dude, fucking uh, getting Callum just going. I, like, I don't even. I don't even think I have to say anything. You just let him, you just point him in a direction, and I, I just sit back and listen, and it's fucking brilliant. 
because he's just he's super passionate about certain things and he'll he's got the gift of the gab that's for sure that guy can talk love it but he's he's entertaining so it's not like i'm listening to ben stein talk about you know uh was it economics it's keeps you engaged well, you know we could you know what we should do we should do a series where we get guests plastered and then just let them talk about whatever they want like imagine trevor hates intoxicated on big jiu-jitsu oh, podcast we, so one of the failed experiment not really failed because because we um We've done a few of them, and they actually turned out to be really good. Colin was actually on one of these. It was called the Round Table, <clears throat> and usually what I did was I did it with, let's see, I did some with some Globe Trotters, I did some with the guys from the Origin Camp, I did one with a bunch of other hosts from other jujitsu podcasts. That was actually the most disa- that was the most fun I had, but it was also like the worst one because we had um, we had John from Jujitsu After Dark, we had. Uh, Kenaton from um, the Just Roll podcast, and we had Chris from uh, his podcast stop. Man, he's a fucking solid dude. I need to message him, but like pretty much, it ended in just like Chris tapped out first because he's like, "Guys, I drink too much," and just like left. And then we, it was like after three hours, like, "Dude, this is fucking a terrible idea. We'll never do it again." But um, <laughs> but if we can get one. Like maybe run it through like just a whole bunch of local people since it would be a little easier just to kind of monitor them and you know give them a little place to you know crash or sleep somewhere so they're safer. Uber them home. But Uber. Uh, yeah, I think if we can talk to Trevor Hayes about it and just fuck that might be dangerous and awesome at the same time. <laughs> so yeah, let's yeah. What, 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 we need to talk more about that and figure that out. Just like a, like you said, the series of just like disastrous let them drink whatever they it's like drunk history but with combat sports <laughs> i mean we'd have to have, are you how good are you at editing because that's going to be the oh know, like that's going to be the limiting factor oh yeah. dude i totally can make that work <laughs> i'll make it work you know he's doing uh you know he's doing uh, open mic comedy now yeah, I saw that, man, dude. Like, if there was somebody to do it, it would definitely be Trevor. He's fucking very. What's funny is he is super talented, and I always like I always laugh listening to him. So, I guess the next logical step would be for him to do stand up comedy. Uh, I'd be curious to hear it. I'd be then um, why don't we do a mandate at some point, and then we go uh, go to wherever he is, and then just sit in the back and boo him. And, but, oh, we got y'all. We'll heckle the hell out of him. Oh, That'd dude, awesome. but he'll hit us, man. That's the problem, man. Like, <laughs> it's not like going to see like some random ass guy. Like, yo, yo, fuck you, you suck. And what's he gonna do? Get security? Like, Trevor will come out and punch us, man. Or worse, he'll do that leg kick. Oh, oh, fuck that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. He'll so, never be his demo partner. Man, I don't want to. He he was nice enough to me. He was like, keep your hands up. And just hits, man. I'm like, yeah, my bad, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> So like the leg kicks, I've I've seen all the aftermath of Trevor Hayes doing leg kicks, but yeah, I think I think we could pull off a series like this. We just really need to line them up, and I don't know, man. Now that now that I've got like a permanent place to kind of sit down and do some stuff, it's easy. Like, dude, it's it's really hard to plan stuff out when you're in an apartment across an ocean. So I think this will uh, work out well. I think so. I'm looking forward to some of these uh, some of. These- these ideas. We'll have to brainstorm over some beer. Oh, perfect. Yeah. This is like two of my favorite things to do. Drink and talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. So before we transition to the ending part of our episodes, is there anything you want to say to uh, all of our three listeners right now at this point? Because like I said, we haven't put out anything in a while. So I think we've, we're down to three. Well, I mean, I appreciate the three, um, but we need more. So they need to start spreading the word because Big Jiu Jitsu is back, and uh, I, I want to see this. I want to see this thrive. Um, but it's it's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to be here. I'm looking forward to more episodes, and this will just get better as we go. It's like a good relationship, you know. A bad relationship gets shitty as you go. A good relationship gets better as you go. This is going to be a good relationship. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm ecstatic to be here, and I'm enthusiastic, and I'm optimistic, and we are going to transition to another level. Oh yeah, man! You're really throwing in that trend, dude. We're we are professionals at this. Uh, transitioning from 
one co-host to the next co-host talking about how I am really excited to have this go like uh, start back up, especially being in North Carolina. Uh, I will say I'm a bit bummed that Jeff Shaw decided to move to Washington because I feel like I could have picked his brain a bit more and kind of just bugged him. But but I think we'll we'll make it work out here. And uh, I'm really glad that you agreed to be the co-host on the show and now an integral part of the transition of the Big Jiu-Jitsu show from an overseas in Germany podcast to back in the U.S. And uh, I think I think we're going to have a lot of good stuff that we can do out here, and I, I really look forward to what we can do as uh, as the Big Jiu-Jitsu show transition. I, I'm trying to really fit transition into certain areas. <laughs> I'll leave it. But Just yeah. Transition. Transition. Transitioning. Yeah. But yeah, man, I appreciate you coming on, dude. Um yeah, like you said, we'll we'll uh we'll link up and we'll talk more and get some more ideas and just be a little more active, man. Sounds good. Word. So ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of the Big Jiu Jitsu Show. Remember the Pod Bros Podcast Network. Don't forget to go to podbros.com and find yourself another podcast you want to listen to and check out our sponsors, Trap and Roll Soap Company tape armor and rolls gear and you can find all of our old episodes on bjjshow.com i'm rob i'm randy hell yeah <laughs> i forgot i should probably told you that and we'll catch you guys next time <laughs>